All right, here we go. What's going on guys? Welcome back to Pat Outdoors. So I just got a new scooter in the mail. So today we are gonna be unboxing that. On my last video, I mentioned that I was interested in building a stand-up scooter, something like a Razor E300, just to change things up from the MX650 and MX500 builds. Um, so today we're actually gonna be unboxing that together and going over the new project. Thank you, Jackson Kreider, for sending me a Razor E325. If you haven't gotten a chance to do so, make sure you check out his YouTube channel. It's called Flex E Moto. You can also follow him on Instagram. It's called MLI Custom. Let's go check out what's inside this box. assembled for the most part right out of the box. Well, according to the manual that came with it, you just loosen the clamp, position the stem, and then tighten the clamp in place using the Allen key that's provided with it. Good thing I have a gridded floor. It makes it a little easier to eyeball the positioning. This is definitely one thing that you don't want coming loose when you're riding it. Two other things that I recommend doing before taking out your razor for the first time is to adjust the brake lever positioning to what's comfortable for you and also checking the tire pressures to see what they're inflated to. I just have mine inflated to 30 PSI front and rear. I guess that really is it for assembly. I'm just gonna leave it hooked up on the charger for the next five hours or so just to get a decent charge out of it. And then we're gonna go take it out just to get an idea what the baseline top speed is. And for testing speed, I'm using the Psych Plus GPS based speedometer. This is the same one that I use to test out the YZ and all my other bikes. If you are interested in checking this out, I will leave a link in the description where you can get it. Let's go take this thing out. Wow, this thing is slow as balls. One thing I really don't like about this so far is this throttle. It's basically like an on-off switch. Like this is the full movement. It also howls pretty loud. Much louder than my Razer MX500 and my 650. Max top speed is 12.4 miles an hour. All right, well, that was just a quick test around the block, but I already noticed a couple things that I definitely want to upgrade as soon as possible. Just to give you some perspective on load, I'm a 175 pound adult, so I wasn't able to get much more than 12.6 miles an hour out of it as a top speed. But obviously, if you're like a 90 or 100 pound kid, you might be able to get 15, 16 miles an hour out of this thing unmodified. Me personally, I'm gonna modify this thing now because I need a little bit more power. But besides the power or the speed, other things that I wanna address is the brake situation and the noise. So this thing has a singular cable brake lever that goes to a drum. I just feel like everything nowadays should come with at least cable disc brakes. So I'm gonna be addressing that pretty soon, hopefully in the next week or two before I take this thing out on a group ride. And then the other thing is the howling. Uh, it's pretty noticeably loud. It's so much louder than my other bikes that run on a 25H chain. So I might convert this thing to a hub motor, but before I do that, I just wanna see what kind of speed I can get out of it with the original motor. So let's go take this thing apart. Here's what it looks like with the cover removed. In order to remove this cover, you have to remove the six Phillips head screws and then the two four millimeter Allen bolts that secure it to the frame. Let's take a look at what's inside here. So this looks like the same brush controller that's on a MX350. And then here are 
two 12 volt, seven amp hour lead acid batteries. Man, that's weak. And I also, that's pretty small. I can't, I can't imagine getting much ride time out of that. And then this looks like a MY1016, the 250 watt common motor that they power the MX350 with as well. Wish we can fit the same drivetrain in here as we do on the 50 mile an hour MX650, but there's really not much space to cram a battery or a Kelly controller or a MY1020 motor. But I'm gonna look at what options there are for the hub motor. Let me know if you guys have any suggestions. I'm trying to hit at least 30 miles an hour with this thing at the very least. And I also want it to have decent range since I like to go on these longer trips with my friends nowadays. And this power supply plug does look just like the ones on the MX650 and MX500 though. So I wonder if my speed booster mod would fit on this scooter. A speed booster mod is just a plug and play pigtail harness that allows you to add an additional 8.4 volt RC battery to run in line with the lead acid batteries to increase the voltage. One thing about this type of setup is that you must charge this RC battery separately. You cannot just leave it plugged in with the other batteries and charge them together. That will cause damage to this and it will not fully charge it to the correct voltage. Oh, it looks like there's a convenient port that you can remove so you can snake this out. I'm going to remove this bar just to get more room. Okay, if this turns on with a pigtail loop, it means it should work. Oh my God. Well, now that we know that it works for a 24 volt setup with it looped, I'm gonna reinstall everything and we're gonna temporarily tie this additional battery and run it in line and see how fast this thing goes. Here's how I have the additional battery mocked up. And then the harness goes back in the front of the box. Looks pretty clean. Now this is just a temporary setup. This is not even a recommendation. I'm just doing this for testing purposes to see if we can get it to go faster with the stock controller and stock motor. It doesn't really matter if it damages my controller since I'm gonna be replacing everything in the scooter anyway. Hopefully this works all right. Here we go, 15 so far. I do notice a huge delay in the throttle though, so I don't know what that's about. All right, well, official top speed for now with my weight is 15.1. So, does it go faster with a speed booster installed? Yes, a little bit with my fat ass on there, but does this weird thing where initial throttle, sometimes it doesn't move like that. But once you're rolling, it'll go. All right guys, well, I already have a bunch of parts coming in later on this week for the 52 volt conversion. So make sure to subscribe if you don't wanna miss anything on this project. I'm also gonna be going to Electrify Expo in Washington DC tomorrow to check out a couple of e-bikes that just released. Hopefully I get to test ride or test drive a couple PEVs that just came out. So make sure you turn your bell notification on if you don't wanna miss any of that content. If you found today's video helpful or useful in any way, do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you like this kind of content, wanna keep up with some of my projects, consider subscribing to this channel. But this is gonna be it for today. Thank you for watching.